How's it going guys? I'm at Bites Back and welcome to part two of my Caustic Arrow League starter build guide. Um, in the last video I went over leveling through acts to the point where you would start farming for a six link bow and in this video I'm going to cover all kinds of stuff. I'm going to go over gearing on multiple different characters that I've made. I'm going to go over how to craft the gear, I'm going to go over how to make cluster jewels, uh, what you need to look for on cluster jewels, uh, different variants of things you can do, um, your passive tree uh, for leveling and for min-max damage, there, there's a lot I've got to go on here. Uh, like I've league started this build, uh, well the first time I played it was in Solo Southbound Ritual, that's the character I'm on right here. Um, I then played it in the Mayhem event, I played it in the Flashback event in Hardcore, I died twice uh, in that. I've played it in the both of the last two Gauntlets, and I League started it for Ritual League. So, where we left off was with bows. Now, at the very end of the video, I did craft a bow up, and here, I just wanted to go, like, I had a bunch of extra bows, so I went ahead and rolled plus two level of socketed bow gems on all three of these bows here. Down here, these Paradis coins are marking this is how many alterations it took and how many augments I used in rolling each of these. Like this one was almost instantly after, and this one was 47, 13 augments. So these, like, I've never had an issue using alterations to roll my bow once I got it. So the reason I rolled three here, just to save time, because your next step at this point would be to regal the bow. Now this one, this is why I made multiple. This one has uh, a prefix fire damage on it. This bow is usable right off, right out the gates. Like you can then, like, cause you you're probably not gonna have the prophecy yet uh, if you far, especially if you farm the bow yourself. So then you can, like, uh, get Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier, you can craft it on here, and there you go. This this bow will get you, like, like just right here, having, like, you don't even need the high tier Chaos yeah, Stop Multi. I can put the lowest one on here, because that's the first one you'll get. You can take this into red maps with this build, just like this. Um, you are going to start noticing um, that your three Watchstone Conquerors are starting to be a little difficult. That's that's where this build will get you just with this. So, the the issue with this is that it has an extra prefix. Well, we, we really want to regal a suffix, so maybe later on... Once you have more currency to invest, you can re-roll the bow again and say with this one, okay, this one has chaos res. That's really useful, actually. It's a useful suffix. I'm going to regal this again. Oh, man, it hit cold damage. So I did another one. This one hit lightning res. So this one is perfect. This one is it has the ability to be turned into a plus three bow. And the lightning resistance just frees up so much gear. So this, like, this is not an unusable um, bow, but you really want plus two as a prefix and two suffixes, and I'll show you why. Because on this bow, you like after you have a bow like this, like you can use this bow just with the um, chaos dot craft if, if you get unveils any weapon works as long as it has an, a veiled prefix any weapon so that you then need to get let me find prophecies in this mess prophecies maw so you'll need a plague maw 5 now, I filled this tab in Heist League, so I have lots of Plague Mall 5s. They since um, nerfed it, and you can only drop Plague Mall 1. 
So once you get Plague Maw 1, you'll, have, you'll want to complete that as quickly as possible and then use your silver coins to seek prophecies to try and get the next one once it's completed. Um, when I tried to do this in the Gauntlet League it, it, and Gauntlet Practice, it, it seemed really easy to do. Like once you complete the Plague Maw 1, it, it's within the, your next 10 prophecies you turn over you're getting plague mall 2 it, it, it's it's usually pretty quick to get up to plague mall 5 so what plague mall 5 gives you is a crafting recipe which is a suffix that says cannot roll attack modifiers so there's a lot of suffixes that are not attack modifiers like the resistance that i have here and the dexterity that i have here so if I were to craft this on this bow, right, and I want to hit um, plus one to all socket of gems, like if I craft that on here, I'm most likely going to exalt on a suffix rather than what I'm looking for. So I'm going. To, this takes one exalt. So you need two exalts to do this. So you can upgrade your bow. Early once you have two exalts. This is what my first two exalts, uh, the start of Ultimatum League, are going to be used for. So what you do, craft, cannot roll attack modifiers on a bow, plus two socketed bow gems with two suffixes. Easy. That used one exalt. So now I'm just going to take this bow, and the only prefix left that I can hit by exalting this bow is plus one socket of gems. Every single time. Boom. Plus one socket of gems. So now I have a plus three bow. Now I can go back in here. I can put on prefix chaos damage over time multiplier. This is this is a bow that'll take you all the way through in game. That's all you need. Um, if you're able to free up one of the suffixes, um, like at this point, like, the prefixes on the bow are finished, so you can use Harvest to reroll suffixes. Um, this is not an influenced bow, so you can augment speed or whatever else you need on this. Augment speed will get you guaranteed attack speed. Or you can create it like I have this bow here, where I freed up one of the suffixes, and then I multi-modded the chaos.multi and attack speed. So that's all, all you really need. So that is bow crafting. Now, when you're alt spamming your bow, like the dream is to hit plus two level of socketed bow gems and a suffix generic damage over time multiplier. If you see something like this that I made, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to cry because getting that in solo self found would have been huge, but it's plus one bow gems, not plus two bow gems and... Mm. I, I kept that around to just remember that pain. <coughs> so, now, this this gear on this character is optimized for level 100, in, including the passive tree. Like, I've, I'm level 100, I only have 5100 life, I've completely pulled out life wherever I could, and got as much damage as possible. So what I'm going to show you here, first off, is my gear from the uh ritual league start so like i hit level 100 on this character as well i was like 14 overall rank one raider so here it, it preserves the state of your gear when you hit level 100 on you know, racing so here i have the same thing i had a plus two bow that had two suffixes the life and mana on kill and then i Crafted, well, I actually used the TFT Discord to purchase the Cannot Roll Attack mods because uh, I didn't know what to do because my plan was to go into Heist and it was only dropping Plague Mall 1s and I wanted I needed the Plague Mall 5. So I just uh, traded for the craft and then I exalted it afterwards to get plus 1s so okay, gems and Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier. So now the rest of my gear is basically simple. 
This is life and resistances with some dexterity. This is life resists with some strength. Now, those two things are important. You need strength. You're going to need strength and intelligence. Especially early on, uh, your gems, if you're using Bane, like I like to use, Bane requires 155 intelligence to use. Wither also, at max level, takes 155 intelligence to use. Uh, and then I use Enduring Cry, which takes 155 strength to use, and Steel Skin, which uses 155 strength, both of those at level 20. So... The strength and intelligence on these pieces is pretty useful, and I also always am looking for an Agate Amulet. This one's still pretty bad, but it does have an extra strength roll on it um, with some resistances. Uh, the boots I have here are an Incursion movement speed with attack dodge on them uh, with some life and resists. Pretty nice boots, actually. I'm pretty sure I found these myself. Um really easy uh, uh, to get these in Delirium, I've noticed. The Armor Delirium Awards can drop these, as well as this chest, which has the Incursion Life with Hybrid Percent Life. So for a chest, that's what I'm looking for early on. I want, I want a Hybrid Life chest. I want resists if I can get them, but I want an open prefix so that I can craft a 10% chance to dodge spell hits. That is a Veiled mod that comes from chests um, with a Veiled prefix. And my gloves here, more of the same. Life and Resistances. My belt is Life and Resistances. Helmet, Life and Resistances. And my quiver is the only thing that I started to get into the further in-game gearing. Which is a Hunter-influenced Penetrating Arrow Quiver that has Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier on it. That's really all I. That's really the only thing of use on here. Projectile speed is kind of cool. It has low life roll, and I get a pierce additional target, which is is kind of nice for a caustic arrow because, like, if it pierces through an enemy, I think the the caustic arrow explosion happens in both locations. So having pierce, it's not necessary, uh, but it's it's pretty cool. So that's that was my gear, and then I have a catalyst eternal life flask of staunching, my go to for any dodge based build. Um, this flask is much more reliable, in my opinion, than a Seething Divine Life Flask. It recovers so much life. Then I would I was using a Basalt Flask. Since I'm a Raider, I'm ailment immune. So this is for poison. This one gives me attack speed. Uh, an Alchemist of Adrenaline Quicksilver Flask for speed. And I was using this... Um, Eternal en Enduring Eternal Mana Flask at the end of my 100 push because somebody in my Pure Breachstone group um, was running a low level clarity and it was destroying my level 20 clarity and I wasn't getting the mana regen that I needed so I, I, I dropped my Quartz Flask um, that had Curse Immunity on it for this Mana Flask just for Pure Breach Stones. And that's where I hit level 100 so that's why this... I, Manifoss is still here. So there's there's other options. If you don't want to jump right into um, that chest, there you can also go with a Kintsugi. Um, this is what I did when I was leveling this character. As you can see, the colors are still the same, but I also had the same option as well. I had a life chest with intelligence with the crafted spell dodge. So, both of these chests are options. This is uh, Cosprey's Wills for in-game memes and allows you to uh, get an extra curse and curse hexproof enemies. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this until you're, you're content on the level of your character staying where it is. If there was life on this chest, maybe. Uh, another boots option... So I had I had incursion mod boots on the other build. Um, this this here is gear from my mayhem heist push. It's the, it's almost the exact same. Life resists. Life resists. Life resists. Life resists. Here's life resists. This is life resists with movement speed. There's strength here. 
This is Life Resists. I have a Hunter Influenced Quiver that I got Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier on. And I'll show you how to craft all this gear in just a, just a little bit. And the bow is the same thing. Like it's, it's all, like, this is almost cookie cutter gear to what my league start was in Ritual as my SSF Mayhem. So, boots. That's what I was getting at next. So, Adziri's Step are very fantastic for another boots option. Um, they give you 15% chance to dodge spell hits, which really opens up the idea to put on a Kintsugi. Kintsugi is like an extra layer of Wind Dancer. So, less damage taken if you've not been hit in the past 4 seconds, and it increases your evasion if you have been hit while giving you a lot of evasion with life and fire res. It's really solid chest. So it stacks with Wind Dancer. So Wind Dancer is 20% less damage taken if you've not been hit recently, which is the last four seconds. Lowers your evasion if you haven't been hit, but raises it if you have been hit. So if you get hit, your evasion is going to skyrocket um, with Wind Dancer and Kintsugi. Um, and then if you haven't been hit recently, you're going to take 40% less damage from that first hit. Uh, and when you're stacking so much dodge, so with the spell dodge here, I'm looking at on this build, 55 chance to dodge attacks, 60 for spells, and that is 6671 dodge. That's, that's, not, that's not counting evasion at all, which is with Kintsugi. Take the Kintsugi off. Or this chest doesn't really raise it. The Cospreys gives me more evasion. As it has a high evasion. So Kintsugi is is acquirable. It's just not as easy to get early on in the league now since everything that dropped prophecies is not dropping the end of the prophecy chains. So you actually have to go through the prophecy process and think that prophecy is called deadly rivalries yeah deadly rivalry five so you have to go through this prophecy chain and once you get a deadly rivalry five the end of it will guarantee drop you a kintsugi every time so another option for boots early on um because eating at series step is kind of random although it does drop from the normal at siri getting three step assault boots Gives you 10% chance to dodge spells while phasing. 100% uh, increased evasion during onslaught, which as a raider, you're permanently phasing. You're permanently onslaught. So it also has movement speed. It also has life. These boots are easily, you can throw them on and you still have like solid dodge here. But then you can up it a little more. By throwing this on, now like I'm spell dodge capped with my flask. So that's why um, with boots, I like I went for some attack dodge, and then I get spell dodge here. And then because you you get elusive, which gives you chance to fifteen percent chance to dodge attacks and spells, and that degrades over time. So there's 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 unique boot options here. And then, so the your your rings. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to this gear here. So your rings early on in your belt, you don't need a Stygian vise. You also do not need a six link. I have all these six links. It's it's absolutely not necessary um, because I leveled to 100 with this Kintsugi that has four link for my Steel Skin Enduring Cry. Uh, I'm using it to swap my Aero Nova for my Slower Proj for a single target. And my Clarity's in there as well. And then I was leveling extra Caustic Arrows in my helmet because I didn't hit a level 21 Caustic Arrow on this build. Which was sad. So, like, you, you do want to be leveling Caustic Arrows in your offhand. So that you can try and get a level 21 Caustic Arrow. That, that is just as big as getting the plus 3 bow. So, after your Quiver. So, let's start with Quivers. 
So I'm pulling up Craft of Exile here. I'm going to go offhand Quiver. So you can get a Quiver that has damage over time multiplier on it as early as level 44. But if you notice here, if you look at the weightings on all of the suffixes here, damage over time multiplier is by far the um, rarest thing to get on a Quiver. So it, it's like it's possible to get these early on, but it's also not as good as you can get on a Hunter Quiver. So what like and there's also no way to craft this like it's just random. Like I'll, I'll be picking up quiver like every rare quiver I see early in the league to try and find something like this. But what you really want is a hunter influenced quiver. So with the hunter influenced quiver, you can get chaos damage over time multiplier 16 to 20, which is the same, which is higher than the max roll of the damage over time multiplier, which requires level 82 quiver. You can get that on a hunter influence quiver at eye level 68. So your first hunter encounter that drops a quiver, you can fairly easily get chaos damage over time multiplier quiver. Uh, you need 80 for the highest tier. And then uh, you can get an additional pierce on the quiver with Hunter. You can get extra movement speed on the quiver. The thing, the thing is with the quiver, there's nothing you need on this quiver. Except, except you would probably want life. As high as you can get. And you want chaos stop multi. So if I want any chaos stop multi on this quiver. And I, I've... I self-crafted all my gear with fossils before. So if this is the only mod that I want and I want to use fossils, I'm going to use a single fossil and compute that selection. It's going to tell me aberrant. I'm going to get that on average with four tries using an aberrant fossil. Get a quiver that has chaos damage over time multiplier as long as it's hunter influence. Now, I don't, I, I'm not too well versed at the moment on how harvest crafting is going to work i think you can use the let me turn off fossils i don't know if it's in here yeah you have to do a simulator or something for harvest crafting but the chaos that um re-rolls an item that includes a chaos modifier will likely work on the quiver but i don't think you can augment or like remove or do anything with influenced bases that's what I took away from it. So you can probably harvest craft this as well, but you can for sure get it using just aberrant fossils. So let's say I also wanted life on this. Uh, let's say like 60 life. So let's recompute this with one. Um, with just aberrant fossils, I'm looking at 1 in 16 chance to get at least 60 life and chaos damage over time multiplier on quiver. And then you can change this to 2 which is going to be aberrant pristine, of course. This is like nine tries, but still just aberrant fossils is... Like, it's it's relatively cheap to craft craft it yourself. Because, like, well, Toxic Rain is getting nerfed. Um, we've, we found that out in the development manifesto yesterday. So, uh, there probably won't be as much of a pool for Chaos Stop Multi early, as well as... Um, Anybody who is trying to do Essence Strain and Contagion with a bow, I think that's getting nerfed as well. So it might be per like easy to fairly easy to purchase something like this through trade, but like I'm just showing you, it's 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 really easy to craft a good quiver. Like getting attack speed is okay, getting resistances is okay, getting dot multi with damage over time multi is the dream. Which that's like a 20x quiver because it's. It's absurdly hard to hit this. So, moving on. That that's the first that's your that's your first upgrade that you're going to want to try and make. So your next upgrade is going to be gloves. So here I have these gloves are nuts too. These are elder gloves. Elder gloves have a little bit more useful things that can roll on gloves that can benefit the build, but hunter gloves are easier to roll. 
So we'll pull up another Craft of Exile here. And here I want to look at gloves. We go to Dex gloves. And then let's look down here at Elder. Elder mods his chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill. Um, the build doesn't have any guaranteed way to get frenzy charges unless you're using uh, like cold snap, but eh. And anyways, Elder can like there's there's chaos mod here. Poison with socket gems, uh, chaos mod here, and chaos dot multi. So there's a couple extra mods, so it's a little bit harder to craft and guarantee chaos dot multi. You need 68 for the lowest tier and 80 item level for the highest tier elder gloves to get chaos dot multi. Looking at hunter gloves, the only chaos mod here is the chaos dot multi. You can roll cold dot multi, fire dot multi, fizz dot multi. And then, as for prefixes on Hunter, there's no there's no Chaos mods here. None of these mods are particularly useful as well. So, you don't really want any of these prefixes on Hunter. Um, whereas, Elder can give you a chance to get Frenzy Shards on Kill, which is more damage. It's also really hard to hit that, too. So, let's, let's look at... Let's, let's say I influence this with Hunter. Um, I want Chaos.Multi. Doesn't matter tier. And I want life higher than I can craft. So that would be 70. 70 life. Let's go Fossils. To compute. 13 average tries of Aberrant plus Pristine. 33 tries on average for just Aberrant. Now, if I change this to Elder, I'm pretty sure it's going to be harder. So if I want Chaos.Multi and the Life, just like I had, and I compute this, I think it's going to be harder to hit. Aberrant plus Pristine, it says 60 tries to get that because of the extra Chaos mods in the pool. So it's, it, it's much easier to get using Hunter Gloves, like I mentioned. But also, like, fairly easy to roll, especially if you get Hunter, but um, Harvest Crafting, if you can use the Chaos that grants an additional Chaos mod, fairly easy there as well. So now, the you you would still be using your, your, your belts, your rings, your helmet is all just kind of really gearing up towards... Like, giving you as much life and defenses as possible, especially while you're leveling. You're going to need the resistances, most likely. Until you can really get things kind of more min-maxed with your gear. So, the next big upgrade you can get, because, like, you're, you're going to be working towards your plus three bow. You're going to have to get the prophecies. You're going to have to find two exalts. Like, that's the biggest upgrade early you can get. The gloves and quiver are fairly cheap. Now, the next biggest upgrade you can get is an amulet that has plus one level of all chaos skill gems. That's going to give you an additional level to your caustic arrow. And it's huge. Absolutely huge. Now, like, I bet this amulet's pretty expensive on its own, having plus one layer of level of all chaos skill gems and chaos damage over time multiplier so i i crafted this myself and let me show you a trick here you well let me first off you need item level 82 or higher to get plus one chaos skill gems so i have a couple a couple hunter amulets here this one's 83 this one's 86 and this one's 81. now this this amulet can roll T1 Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier, but it cannot roll the Chaos Skill Gems. And I'm going to show you a trick here. So this, this build really needs strength and it really needs intelligence. So let's say like you drop your own Hunter Amulet and it's a Coral Amulet like this. 
So there's there's a really common trick that you can go to Lily here, purchase one red gem, one green gem, and one blue gem, and you can turn any amulet. So this is an influence warlord amulet. You vendor it with these three, it's going to turn it into an onyx amulet. It works with every single one. Okay, put this in here, that's going to turn it into an onyx. Onyx amulet. Onyx amulet. Works with everything. So, especially if you were to, if I was to find this at the start of a league, I would turn it into an onyx amulet and sell it as an onyx amulet. It's going to keep its item level. And who needs a coral amulet? And then get... So you can do that to give yourself a good amulet base like I did here. And then let's see how you would try and craft that. So here I'm going to go jewelry, amulet, influence, hunter. And then item level at least 82. I'm going to set that in stone because it's going to drop a couple things off. If you have an 82, it's going to like you're going to have some mods that can't roll, which is kind of helpful. So for Chaos mods, what can you roll? You can get Chaos Resistance, you can get Chaos Dot Multi, and you can get Chaos Skill Gems. Now this is a pretty rare roll. Uh, chaos Dot Multi is not too hard to hit, and like Chaos Resistance is pretty hard to hit as well. So you can do the same thing with Aberrant Fossils, just like before. I mean, you can also get a Dexterity Skill Gems here, but that's... that. If you get that, GG. That's an extra level to your gym. But I want these two things. Like, I, I'll be happy with if I hit Chaos Skill Gems and Chaos Dot Multi. How do I craft this with fossils? Let's say I want one. It's an average 97 tries with Aberrant Fossils. Yikes. That's... Kind of a lot if I turn this. I just look for the Chaos Skill Gems. Which is the best thing you can get. Average of 18 tries. With Aberrant Fossils. And like I, I'm never looking for life here. I just want this, this damage. So I'm going to go back here. Uh, the, only, the only thing you could really do. Combined to make this easier with fossils is with faceted fossils, which are like deep delve fossils, which might be easier to acquire this league, as well as using sanctified fossils. Uh, in addition to the aberrant fossil, nothing else is really going to help you. Um, I, I can I'll do a three just to see here, because there are some things that block each other out, like a dense plus pristine. That's probably going to be up here somewhere. Yep, Aberrant plus Dense plus Pristine takes 11 tries on average. Um, but most of these are going to be like faceted fossils, which are fairly expensive and non-existent early on. So you can use Aberrant Dense plus Pristine and have a decent chance at hitting that. But um, it wasn't too bad. Like I think 18 it said. Let me put this back for chaos dot multi. Like you, this is like your min maxed damage for the build, and then let's compute with three resonators and see what it tells me here. It's gonna pull up almost the exact same thing, but you still get this aberrant plus dense plus pristine, aberrant corroded, sanctified. Some sanctified fossils are they're findable. It still says it's more efficient chaos, like currency investment wise. Like it's it it factors in um, the chaos value of the fossil and the resonator, and that could that fluctuates. So I don't know how much I'd rely on this. But it says if you were just chaos spam, it would take eight thousand eight hundred eighty four chaos with a sixty three percent confidence to hit these mods. So you definitely don't want to try chaos spamming this. You you like fossils is a great source, but also harvest crafting, though you can't hit one and augment the other with an augment chaos like you used to do because you can't use those on influenced items. 
if I understand that correctly. So if I go to two, it's probably just gonna be sanctified, faceted, aberrant plus corroded, aberrant plus metallic. Anyways, the one that I have here that I made in solo stuff on, I made using this method with the aberrant plus dense plus pristine. I use this combination and I hit this amulet here. And the, hitting all this, hitting the mana regeneration rate opened up other avenues for my build as well. Now, there are further ways you can push this. Um, the, the last, like the very last optimization I make is working in Aspect of the Spider. That's not important early on. Um, it definitely requires minus mana cost of skills. You have to de-level clarity to give yourself more mana space for the Aspect of the Spider because it takes a 25% mana. Um, so with some reduced mana cost crafts, you can make that work. Um, I think I covered everything there. Here, I'm using, like, my, this was my first build, and um, with this, I went full, like, evasion. Like, I stacked a Stib Knight with evasion with a Jade Flask to maximize my evasion with the Kintsugi and whatnot. So, that's how I stayed alive, but this was very vulnerable to physical damage. So... I have ended up switching to kind of a different style. Now let me go to my Ritual League character. Now here, my gear is as min-max as you're going to get. Like, it, it is not... Like, the gear I have on this character, you're not getting better gear. Like, nearly at all. So I kept the same boots that I had early on. I have a quiver with life, pierce an additional target, attack speed, chaos dot multi, and damage over time multiplier. I think I paid 20 exalts for this quiver. It's it's absurd. I I have caustic arrow damage enchant with nearby enemies have minus 12 chaos res, and I crafted physical damage taken as fire because uh, your big weakness on this build is chaos damage or physical damage. So that's why. I, I really just prefer to rely on the dodge for my defenses. Like, of course, I'm getting evasion rating, right? But I rely mostly on the dodge for my defenses. So, like, I don't really need the evasion, so I'm stacking. Like, even though with acrobatics this is only 1,500 armor, like, I'm getting 35% physical damage reduction from those two flasks. I try to keep up as, keep up as often as possible. So here is a plus three bow on a synthesized base that has chaos damage implicit with damage over time multiplier and chaos damage over time multiplier. I still need an augment speed for this to get attack speed on the suffixes. But yeah, that it's disgusting. This this disgusting bow that I purchased. Um, here is just hunter gloves. Uh, these have high strength on them. Like, I want to chaos that multi with as high life as I could get. So when you search for as high life as you can get on trade, um, you're looking at getting strength pretty easily. So you can see here I have 176 strength and 160 intelligence on this build, which is required for my wither, 155 int, and my steel skin, which I de-leveled at one point. Um, they're only level 19 at the moment. As I was toying around with something else, um, a kinetic blast bleed build. Um, I have plus one with um, chaos dot multi on an agate amulet. I'm pretty sure I crafted this myself uh, using the from the looks of things. This was probably a harvest craft that had. It was like a chaos orb that had increased chance to hit chaos multi modifiers because I hit all these plus the cold res. I then crafted life, augmented influence modifier, and hit movement speed. I was really kind of hoping for like a plus one dex gems, but that's fine. So now let me kind of get into the 
gems here. So, hmm, I want to do this. I'm actually going to go over the gems that are in this first, because both of these builds have kind of scaled more towards trying to fit an additional curse in. So we've gone over all this. Let's go over gems. And I, I'll compare here with thing like I've done I've done things just a little bit different every on every iteration of this build. So Caustic Arrow is your main your main gem link here. You want to get it level 21. Quality doesn't matter too much. It gives you increased area of effect, which isn't too much of an issue. Um you have pretty good coverage and you with enough attack speed being a raider you can like you can cover everything pretty well. So your your red socket is for a damage on full life at first. You will upgrade this to a level three in power uh, whenever you can get a hold of one. Uh, corrupted level three in powers are fairly cheap. Um, and they drop throughout the league as people are trying to get level fours. A level four in power is desirable, um, but not as important early on. So then I have a vicious projectiles. This does not need quality because it increases physical damage. Void Manipulation with quality, Swift Affliction with quality, and Slower Projectiles. And then that swaps in with Aero Nova, Slower Projectiles with, yeah, with quality. And this with quality gives attack speed. So Aero Nova, and I have the same thing here, like I, I'll gym swap for a single target. Um, just using Slower Projectiles in spit base of Aero Nova. The Aero Nova has a less projectile damage mod on it, and slow projectiles has a more projectile damage mod on it. So, um, up here, I'm at Aero Nova. It says I have 377,000 cast op per second, and then I swap this 652. So it's like almost double damage by swapping those, which is pretty useful. And like that's that's the that's before Wither Stacks. That's before a Despair Curse. So, like, the the damage is pretty, pretty solid. Further here, the, like, so the next important thing is you have your second wind linked to Dash. I prefer to use Dash. You can use Flame Dash. I'm using Flame Dash on my other build. And I use Enduring Cry with Steel Skin, which I don't currently have up here. But I love having Steel Skin on this left click. It's just an extra layer of defense, especially while leveling. Mm -hmm. Enduring Cry will get you Endurance Charges and give you physical damage mitigation that way. So here I have a level 20 Clarity. I have Wither with Quality. Quality increases the skill effect duration and allows them to stack more with faster casting, Spell Totem, and multiple Totems. So when I was... Um, leveling and fighting Malachi, I mentioned that with Spell Totem you can cast these totems away from you. And the Malachi little red runes post on the ground, you can pop them with your totems. Like that. What else do I have here? I have gloves. Gloves have Malevolence with Vitality and Despair with Bane. Now, um... In my helmet here, I'm leveling extra caustic arrows because I was upset that I I didn't get to level 21. So I was leveling 10 because I wasn't missing it a second time, but I hit level 100 before I hit a second round of level 20 gems. So that's where that ended up. Um, up here, I'd probably have a cast when damage taken, a mortal call. Um... Cast on death portal is what I tend to go to afterwards. So this that's what the gym links may basically look like. Um, I, I would like to use Bane. Bane's not required. Bane gives you some increased curse effect. Bane can also destroy pots and barrels. As well as applying a little bit of damage over time. And on like this was my initial build. On this build I'm dual cursing with despair and temp chains 
using faster casting so I can get it get it out faster. Um, with Swift Affliction and Void Manipulation because Bane actually does do chaos damage over time. So it's just a little bit of extra damage there. Which is pretty nice. And then here I have a Cast on Death Portal. I have a Divergent Vitality, which they nerfed. So on full life gives you damage. Here's my Wither Totem set up. I have Dash, Link to Second Wind. I wasn't using Steel Skin and during Cry yet here. Malevolence linked and Clarity here. So I've ended up shying more away from this Bane strategy that I had initially. Here I have a level 4 in power. Uh, your damage numbers will be slightly higher um, with damage on full life than with a level 3 in power. But uh, level 3 in power will increase your damage consistency a ton. Um, and it's really useful. So that's that's all for that character. Back to this one. So this character is good at everything. Um, I, I struggled with the amount of beyond I was putting on maps in the Mayhem event with um, Harbingers in the map. Um, the beyond bosses can be kind of tricky to kill when you're in, like in Aero Nova um, without really a lot of the other gear because I didn't have the Chaos Stop Multi stuff here. So this is the min-max gear. So we're going, going from like the basics to this. So what I really wanted here is I wanted Frenzy Charge and Kill and Explode. To be honest, Explode is not necessary. They're changing Explode as well. What I really wanted here was Frenzy Charge and Hit and an open prefix for Spell Dodge. Um, on a belt. You can get Hunter Influence with Chaos Damage on it. Uh, Flask Life Recovery Rate is really, really scales with um, this Catalyst Eternal Life Flask Staunching. Increased Recovery Rate means, like, I don't have a way of lowering my life. So, right now, the current, like, uh, is there anything else I need here? Like, I have Intelligence on this ring. Like, I have um, Feral Catalyst these up to get increased reduced mana cost of skills and somewhere yeah i have aspect of the spider which is the very last thing i'm going for like before then i'm gonna have a level 20 clarity just like i had on the other gear uh, which is here which i lower once i get uh the minus mana cost crafts which are difficult to get so like it's not cost me too much mana i have a lot of regen and yeah the exploding mod is nice, but it's not necessary. Like I mentioned, I, I leveled to 100 using this chest right here. I didn't even have it six socketed. Like, this is all kind of the this additional gear that I was using that I showed off earlier. Now, once. Now, let me look at my tree here. So, this is my, my min max tree for survival, I would say, at level 100. So you're not going to have cluster jewels early on, um, especially not this Watcher's Eye, but I can show you here. Uh, I have Aeronova in, so I'm at 452. I put this in, I'm at 482. So I don't even think that's 10% of my overall damage. And this uh, damage over time multiplier while affecting my Malevolence jewel is expensive. It's like 20 exalts. Like getting a level 4 in power is a higher priority over getting... Uh, this watch reside for sure but you can also upgrade into awakened arrow nova you can get an awakened void manipulation you can get awakened vicious projectiles and you can get awakened swift affliction there is no awakened slower projectiles but here like my arrow nova fires six because of the awakened arrow nova so there's extra scaling here with awakened gems uh, void manipulation, vicious projectiles, swift deflection are all relatively cheap. I think Aero Nova is even pretty cheap. Um, so none of these are super, super expensive. And here I've got Second Wind, Enduring Cry, Steel Skin. So um, let me put this back on. So I use um, Enduring Cry quite a lot. More than I use it for endurance charges, I'm using it as an extra life flask. So, 
Especially these really long drawn out boss fights like Maven. Um, or something like the Feared. I am using like Rislatha here for extra life charges. If you haven't used the life flask, so this can come back. But I also have this here that recovers a ton of life. It says regenerate 1914 life over one second. Um, increased life. Oh, it says flask life recovery rate. Does this say life recovery from flask? That's all flasks. Yeah, this is all flask stuff. So all this increased life recovery from flasks is really scaling my flask here. So, I'll go over the tree a little bit more in Path of Building and I'll show you kind of how to get it to this point. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw this back in and kind of go over my cluster jewels. This cluster jewel um, is an 8 passive chaos damage. It has Unholy Grace, Unwavering Evil, and Touch of Cruelty. Um, you really just want three mods if you can get them. There's um, Touch of Cruelty isn't super great, um, but it's there. It does cause enemies hindered by you to take increased damage, which um, Aspect of the Spider kind of works in. Uh, let me pull up another Craft of Exile here. And here I want to look at Cluster Jewels, large chaos damage. So there's not many mods here. Um, Overwhelming Malice doesn't help you at all, but it's also 68. So if you get under 68, um, same with Dark Ideation, it's all 68. So if you're farming the foothills for your bow, and you get a 8 passive Chaos Cluster Jewel in there. Guess what? You have two of the possible prefixes that you could get. But the weighting on these is really low as well. Um, I would Harvest Craft these. If you get a Chaos... It's weird, but I, I think it comes across a Chaos Chaos. That uh, has, has increased likelihood to roll Chaos mods. It's really easy to hit. These, uh, you really want, Unholy Grace is really the only suffix you want, but again, if it's under level 68, you can hit, um, everything you want here. Wicked Paul is really good, Unwavering Evil is really good, Touch of Cruelty, not great, but I do have that in Misery, Life Everlasting is also really good, Despair Curse Effect is big, Skill Effect Duration is big if you're using Toxic Rain. So I, I was also using Toxic Rain Totems in my leveling build, and here I'm not at all anymore. I, I am just using Wither Totems, and while um, Toxic Rain is getting nerfed, you can still use Toxic Rain Totems. Um, you can fit that into a 6-link if you want. It's not really necessary. You can keep it in a 4-link um, just for some extra boss damage. And then use Withering Step, but then you want Withering Step linked to your second wind, so then you're kind of um, you'd have to drop Steel Skin because Steel Skin cuts off your elusive you're gaining from that. So you'd want to go move only there with a Withering Step, which is what I which that's what I was doing in the Gauntlet. Actually, I was using the Toxic Rain Totems with the uh, Withering Step. But Steel Skin, like, I've got 7k life. And I don't even have the right chest on. If I, if I had the life chest, like, 7,500 life, it's here. Um, uh, one other thing I want to mention, wanted to mention about, like, you don't need the Exploding Mod. You have enough dodge that Porcupines are not going to kill you. Um, Dead Day Dead usually doesn't kill you either. It's, it's pretty free. Oh, this is going to be lost now. Where is... my ritual... 
tab. It's, it's only going to be one because I put them all in a folder. It, hopefully it doesn't put it at the bottom. Oh my goodness. I'm not seeing it. Should be like I don't. Actually, there are multiple folders. I feel like they should be at the top here. Unless the unless the uh, ritual stuff hasn't transferred into standard yet. I don't know. Anyways, you can get a chest that has frenzy charge on hit and awaken an orbit with a chance that has um, up to 15% physical damage taken as cold damage. I had a chest very like that that I was going to show off, but I can't find it at the moment because it got added to the standard mess that I have. Um, that is probably more applicable than an explodey chest. Though, if you want to delve on this build, I'd probably use an explodey chest. Like, I, I don't want to... That was kind of the biggest motivation for getting the explodey chest, is so that I could delve and complete my challenge for delving. So now, I'm going to respect this character back to what I had it as. Um, no, before I do that, let's, let's pull up the path building. Let's go through how you level this character. So this doesn't have any gear or skills or anything in it, and I'm going to help Alira. Early on, you're going to use Brian King and Rislatha. So when you start leveling, you're going to go through here, and I'm going to include these in, like, all put together in the thing. You'll be able to select the different trees from this drop down here in the path of building that's in the description of the video. So this is how you start off. Um, I get Primal Spirit, then um, getting Heart of Oak is really nice for stuns early. And Aspect of the Eagle is damage. So from this point, I'm going to go up and get Chaos Dot Multi here. So then what I want is to push over here. You can get life and damage here, which is not a bad idea. So I'm just going to do that. And then you can get Hunter's Gambit. So that's, that's normally what I'm looking at by, like, end of Act 2, maybe. What, what level is this? Or is level 6? That's not right. It's factoring in all of the extra passives. So that's not going to be applicable to later. So then there's two options here. Like, you can try and rush Elusive, which is what I did in the leveling guide. Or you can push up and... Steal off your strength requirements and get more life here. Um, are you also getting intelligence right here? And then you can push across the bottom like this, push up here like this, and you can just like rush damage. You can skip elusive if you don't care about the speed. Then you can get this more life, and then you can get all this damage. That's that's a possibility. Later on, you'd reroute this by doing this and taking these out. And coming over here to get these life nodes because they're just better. Like these four points right here is the same amount of life as four Scion Life Wheel nodes. And you get attack damage, which is life, and you get extra dexterity. But it's 20% life for four points, same as over in Scion Life Wheel. Um, so, and then there's elusive here, that's extra dodge stuff. So you can also stop at this point, um, you can, you can, from, from here, then push up, you can get the life, you can rush elusive for the speed, and then you can grab this damage, and then later kind of, well, you'd want this for speed as well. Then you can 
connect this down, remove this point. You can come across here for this damage here and then still get the life there. Now, this is where you would about be around, like if you're rushing, act um, five. If you stop and level in act five, you can easily just grab almost all of this um, before pushing into act six. Especially if you don't get elusive. If you don't get elusive, like all this is here. You can get all this before you push into act six. So when you push into act six, uh, as I mentioned in the leveling guide, you might be hurting on resistances. So you've got an easy resistances, extra resistances here. Um, there are resists here. This is another four all res on this evasion node. Uh, evasion ES life and resistances. This is four res there. You're two points away from a jewel socket to cover resists. Or you can also push down here for resistances, which you'll come down there anyways. But if you're if you're good on resistances, you can go ahead and get acrobatics and phase acrobatics. So this is this is where I would try and get to earlier on. Again, you can rush acrobatics without this, with extra speed, and push up for the damage later. But the damage the, these these are amazing damage notes. So then, at this point, you have two options. Like I mentioned, you can. You can go ahead and push down for the swap here. But what I prefer to do while leveling is because my damage is going to be solid at this point. I am going to push across here. If I have a jewel, that's anything useful. I'll put it in and then I'm going to push down here. I'm going to grab these nodes. I'm going to get these resistances. And then these strength nodes are going to be valuable. And then I'm going to get constitution and I'm only going to stop there. I'm not going to get these Scion Life Wheel nodes until I'm pushing into maps. And then what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start pushing down and work my way into Herbalism. And then push my way over to connecting to the Ranger's Start. And then I'm going to flip all of this. So I'm going to remove all of these nodes with all of the refund points I get through leveling. So like right here, level 72 required for this. So you like, if you can work that out, like this is level 77. If you're farming the bow purely yourself, this is about where, this is where you're going to be entering maps. And then you're going to have a lot more life. I have life on the tree, 148%. Oh, because I didn't grab these two nodes. I thought it was like 160. So, but like this is this is like early maps. Um, you're gonna have a six link bow likely around this point, so you don't need more damage. Uh, like a lot of the time, like this is still routed like this for me. So that's level 76. But getting this rerouted is is good overall. If you need strength or int, you can grab it there. Um, but these nodes are the best you can get. Then you would want to fill out this here. This puts me at level 86. Um, these damage nodes aren't super important. Um, so what you're looking at here Level 84 build. There's not much more you can do with life. These are 4% life nodes. I've got 198% life. That's pretty solid. There's two more life nodes here. Two more life nodes here. But at this point, I'm just like, okay, I want more damage. This is a one point for 16% damage. This is two points for 30% and 15 45%. Um, there's damage here. Uh, this is a bunch of attack speed. And damage, if you get all these, that puts me at level 95. Without cluster jewels. Um, jewel socket there. Um, but yeah, this this is really all you need. So then once you once you want to start getting into cluster jewels, all these would come out, these points would come out, these points would come out, this would come out, these points would probably come out. 
Um, that frees up quite a few points for Cluster Jewels. Um, and then I don't think I finished going over the Cluster Jewels, but you want an 8 pass, like 8 or 9 passive Chaos, and then you want Damage Over Time Multiplier Jewels. Uh, exposure Therapy is like easily the best because the Chaos Res against Damage Over Time is really nice for um, anything that leaves Chaos Damage on the ground. So I have that on both of these. Over here I have Student of Decay, which is increased Chaos Damage. Increased damage over time, chaos resistance, probably not the best. Um, I'd be looking for flow of life over that one. Um, but let me pull this back up over here. So I mentioned I mentioned these, uh, the large cluster jewel. So let me look at medium cluster jewels with... So there is a damage over time multiplier, and there's also a chaos damage over time multiplier. Chaos damage over time multiplier. They're like, there's a lot of mods you can get on here. There's a bunch of stuff with poison and stuff. Um, I prefer to try and go for the damage over time ones because there's, I think there's less mods overall. Brush with death is good, though. Root for potency is okay. Circling oblivion works. Dark ideation doesn't. Eldritch Inspiration is okay. It gives you some mana in mana region with some dot multi. You can only get that one on this one, I believe. Eternal Suffering. Chances to inflict Withered. If there's five or fewer Withered debuffs on the enemy, so that doesn't stack as well with the Withered Totems. But you can get Exposure Therapy. Flow of Life is really good. Uh, you get damage plus life and region, which is cool. Hemorrhage is for... Uh, Ailments, low tolerance is for poison, septic spells is for spells, poison, this is for poisons and bleeds, student of decay is what I'm using, unwavering evil, you can get on the large cluster jewel as well. Um, Battle invigoration gives ES in, light, in damage, damage with ailments, we can pull is you can also get on the large cluster jewel as well. So let me change to a damage over time multiplier one. There's a lot less mods. So it's easier to hit mods that are decent. Um, wasting affliction, you don't want. It's also a 68. Flow of life is 68 and brush with death is 68. So that one that probably has student of decay with exposure therapy is probably a lower item level. Cause I definitely crafted the jewels myself. It's really easy. Um, like both of these are the only two with chaos tags, so you can use uh, aberrant fossils. Like if I wanted this to this fossils, go to compute best selection. It's still gonna like aberrant takes six six aberrant fossils to hit that, and it's like better than. Everything else, so it's really easy to hit with fossils. It's really easy to hit with harvest. You, you want two mods, of course, and flow of life is one that works. Breach of potency is one that works. Brush of death is one that works. Circling oblivion is okay. You just don't want hemorrhage. You don't want wasting affliction. Flow of life is probably the like, like. The best is Brush with Death, Exposure Therapy, but Flow of Life is just as good, in my opinion. So, for, for other jewels, you want one with Corrupted Blood, cannot be inflicted on you. This one has Chaos Damage, Projectile Damage, Area Damage, all those scale the damage. I, I found that you're better off looking for percent increased damage on jewels, like the Area Damage, Projectile Damage, Chaos Damage, Increased Damage... I think that might be all of them. Um, I think that's better than... This one has life and projectile damage. So I think... And strength, which is probably important. But I believe that is better than... The damage over... Like the 4% chaos damage over time multiplier you can get. I'd, I'd, I think it's better to stack... Like I said, the chaos damage, projectile damage, area damage type of stats 
I don't I don't know if the damage with bows works. So I think that is about everything. I know this video has gone on pretty long, um, and I'm gonna end it by showing you a Maven kill with this build spec'd in. I'm gonna respec it back to what it was. So I'm gonna spec out of all these life nodes because once I hit 100, I don't need this much survivability. I want as much damage as I can get. So I was looking something like that. And then let's see here. Pull out these. Reconnect this so that and get that. Pull out all of this. My life, my life's dropping pretty, pretty quickly here. Gonna slap in this damage. I already have these damage nodes. Right. And then I'm going to get an additional curse. And one more point. Yep, and it was right there. In the life. So it's still 5795 life. Not bad. Damage is higher. Uh, this, like I said, this is as much damage as you're going to see on a cost scale build. A raider like unless you get like a dex gems skill gems thing maybe um it's it's pretty stacked and i am using here i have bane with faster casting and despair but i also throw in punishment punishment is also getting changed so it's not going to be as good with the low life threshold changing to 50% instead of 30%. Um, but this says cursed enemies take 90% increased damage while on low life. Um, with that, it's like giving culling strike on it. But it also stacks with wither. So it's not just a 90% increased damage. Like wither is giving me... Um, I guess I should look at the Wither Gym. 6% increased Chaos Damage taken per stack. Um, stacks 15 times. 6 times 15 is 90. So yeah. So it's like 15, 15 Wither Stacks. So it's, it doubles the full effect of Wither. But something I have not mentioned is um, Anointments. So what do you do for Anointments? While leveling, the best Anointment you can get is Disciple of the Unyielding. It takes Violet, Crimson, and op Opalescent. Um, this will give you Frenzy Charges as you go. And then, like, I don't use a Cast on Death portal. Um, while I'm leveling, I would have an Immortal Call Cast on Damage taken in these two slots. And then... Um, another option is Dirty Techniques for damage, but there is a node way up here called Corruption. Gives you 20% increased effect of Withered. So you're looking at 7.2% chaos damage, increased chaos damage taken, stacking up to 15 times. Um, let's just say it's 7, so that's an extra 15% increased damage taken on enemies. So this is this is more valuable. Um, I don't think it's as useful. Well, it, gives, it gives you increased chaos damage as well. Um, I don't think it's as useful with Withering Step as it is uh, Withering Totems. Um, but, yeah. Here, uh, Helm Enchants, cost of care damage is probably the best for damage. Um, on my other build, I had a plus one use of dash, which it was pretty nice having an extra use of dash. Um, this build is amazing at heists. Like, it's kind of absurd. Oh, that's why there's so many heists. It empties all my heist stuff. I could, I could run a quick heist. Uh, let me find a... What do I want? I want agility. I can kind of show you with the amount of speed that you get. How nuts heists are. 
I would love to switch back to Dash for this, but... Um, I'd have to recolor my chest, so I'm just going to stick with the Flame Dash. Dash has a little bit faster cast on it. So after this, I'll show you the damage with a Maven kill. I want Aaron over here. This is Underbelly. This is like one of the easiest ones of these. So you really don't have to fight stuff. Like, And I'll show you how to deal with doors as well. So with doors, um, especially the nasty ones, you can drop your wither totems right there. And um, all of the like projectiles and stuff will get directed and procced by your wither totems. And you can stand at a far distance and cover the room in Cossack. It's it's kind of broken. If we're being honest. Like it's 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 so like heists are the freest thing ever. You have so much speed, you have so much dodge. Um but like I can get behind stuff before it can even attack. But the reason I picked agility is I'm gonna show off the like the dodge of the raider. But I can't pass up the fossils. So the, the best part about being a raider is the ability to get out. Looks like I'm not taking that. Oh, this is not what I thought it was. Alright, she said open the last one. And heists, heists are like my go-to for currency earning early in the league, so this build kind of plays into that. But then when I want to leave... Here's another one. I'm just going to walk through this one slowly. <laughs> and then I go out. That's how I leave heists. Now, agility heists and deception heists don't have anything stopping you. Uh, my least favorite heists are demolition heists, which are the one everybody loves because Venduri is OP, OP, but demolition takes forever. Absolutely takes forever. Like, I, I was in and that, out of that heist in like two minutes. Like, they're, they're, they're super, super fast. So, um,. I think the only thing left is a Maven kill. I recorded this earlier, so that's going to be it for me. Um, hit like and subscribe. I hope you learned something. Um, and if you try this build, I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. I've I've leveled this build like 10 times. It's never let me down. And you can still probably um, squeeze in um, Toxic Rain Totems. And switch to Withering Step like I did in the leveling build. But that's going to be it. Um, hope you enjoy the Maven kill. Now let me go this sound. That. Close. I need to move my pace and enjoy. Alrighty. Let's finish this off with a uh, Maven. That's why not. It's been a while since I've done this, so hopefully I can pull this off without too much issue. Um, Far Proj. Like, this is this is the most caustic arrow damage you're like getting on a raider. That's for sure. Oh, come on. It's the only attack that really sucks in here. Getting hit by that hurts a little bit. Really? I missed one again. Will 
Uh, you could get much more damage here if I was using like Toxic Rain totems or something. In addition to this, I've learned that you really, as much as possible, want to focus down the, the center. Like if you ignore all the other enemies in here and focus down the middle, things go so much quicker. Alright, memory time. Up, right, up. Okay, Maven. Why? And, and that beam. It's like the worst combo of stuff happening at once. Oh. Oh, really? The, the, it was over. Right. Up. Left, up, left. Are you, are you kidding me? She really be trying to kill me. Just face. And I ha I've done this fight with about a third of the damage that I have. It, it's it's doable. Bit of a lag spike there. Try to put my wither totems on the middle, so it gets the nucleus and not the enemies okay get off the memory right up right up left up right up right up top Keep the withered totems down, and this goes so much faster. Okay, get these. Okay, another memory game. Right, up, right, up, right, up. Lovely. Okay. Beam coming. I really listen for that death made real cue. Uh. Last phase of this. Now, the last phase of this fight is where you really, or I really advise using flame dash instead of dash. I love dash for map clear. But I'm using flame dash in this fight because I can dash across the beam. Okay. Okay. Right. 
right, up, left, right, up, right, up, left, right, hit the beam. The wither totems is where like half the damage comes from, so keeping them down is really helpful. And I touched the beam, that's not good. Okay, memory game though. Give me time to sleep it off. Right, up, right, up. Um, right, up, right. Ah, I didn't see the first two. <laughs> I really wanted that deathless. Well. Man, I walked through the... I touch it again. Okay, get to do this again. Make sure I'm paying attention. Right up, right up, right. Dodge helps, but that attack hurts. Okay, there she goes. Not too bad. Maven's Orb. Yay! I think we will. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the Ultimatum League. Cheers.